It most definitely wasn't the start of the season that we all hoped for, but we're going to do our best to keep the faith as we head into Week 2. We'll recap that embarrassment of a game against the Saints and take a look at what needs to be fixed as we head on to the Lions next week. As always, we'll also have your listener feedback. All this and more on your Packers Fan Podcast. Welcome back. Podcasting since 2005, I'm Wayne Henderson from MediaVoiceOvers.com, and upon further review, maybe we should have had our starters play a little more in (laughs) preseason. And I'm Scott Clark from the Gaming Outsider, podcasting since 2013, but I got just about as many gray hairs as Mr. Henderson does. I can't wait to hear how Wayne turns this week into something positive, because I sure can't. Uh, This is episode 230 of your Packers Fan Podcast. Win or lose, we have to talk about it. We'll discuss what we liked and didn't from whatever that was in Jacksonville. We'll also have some great feedback that came in on a listener voicemail at 920-3-PAC-GO and by email as well as in our Facebook group. And then it's time to preview the Week 2 home opener with the Packers hosting the Detroit Lions, including Scott's keys to victory for the Packers. All that and a bit more. So, some of the highlights that jumped out from this yeah, uh, game against it. the Lions. Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Wayne. <laughs> what well, highlights do you have? Well, Jordan Love got to play the final 10 minutes or so of the game. And sure, he did have a forced fumble. But without David Bakhtiari and Devontae Adams was out of the game by then, he looked about as good as he could be, especially on a day like this one was. But personally, I thought, you know, the game was lost. So, put him in. Make sure Aaron Rodgers doesn't get injured and get Jordan Love some real playing time, and I kind of liked it. Yeah, I don't know if this is a positive or not, but uh, he did get the first third down conversion of the game. Yes, Aaron Rodgers did not convert on third down a single time the entire time he played, (laughs) but Jordan Love got one, so yay. (laughs) If I have to look for anything positive, I've got two, but the first one is that, hey, no injuries. Nobody was injured the entire game. I know Zadarius Smith was coming off of uh, you know a little bit of an injury there, but he did about 18 snaps and uh, looked pretty decent. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, him <laughs> later on in the show. But hey, no other bad news on injury, so no news is good news. Well, sure. I don't want to put a damper on that, but uh, one of our tight ends, Josiah, did get banged up. Okay, I've not right. heard how he's doing. Look but, at me being positive and you bringing me down. I know. What what kind of week is this? I don't know, man. It's all topsy-turvy. <laughs> and although it was nice that we were able to play on natural grass instead of the field turf in the Astrodome, I, I think the Jacksonville heat likely hurt us a little bit more. Well, it hurt everybody. I can't imagine how hot it was to play down there. If you saw those giant fans sp- spitting out like mist on everybody and they just looked miserable and Aaron Rodgers' hair looked greasy as hell like just, someone need, my wife was yelling at the screen every quarter to tell him to cut his hair and shave his face because she thinks he looks disgusting <laughs> what's funny is my wife my wife was saying the same thing especially when she saw the post game press conference but yeah i am I'm, I'm not a fan either i think he i saw a comparison on uh, i think in our in my discord over on the gaming outsider somebody posted a picture of rogers from yesterday Next to Frank from the show Shameless, played by William H. Macy, who is a, you know, just straight up alcoholic, terrible person. And the resemblance was pretty similar. So just saying, just saying. But you know what, Wayne? I do have another positive. Believe it or not, I do have another positive. Our punting game was pretty stellar. Look at look at how far I'm reaching for something good right now, man. Our punting game. We got this new punter. It's pronounced, is it Bohorkas? Close enough uh, at this point. Now, he averaged about 44 yards per punt, which doesn't sound fantastic, but you got to factor in that uh, that was that included a short range punt that he did put the ball inside the 20 yard line. And he had one earlier before that. That was a booming kick that uh, it was incredible. It was an incredible kick. So, yeah, hang time. uh, Yeah, lots and lots of hang time. So, hey, looking for positives. The punting game is strong, but we can't win games on punting alone. So let's talk about some lowlights. All right. Well, not in chronological order, but in order of how I felt right after the game. <laughs> that was a bullcrap penalty where they were claiming Zadarius Smith roughed the passer. 
I mean, the hit on Washington's Ryan Fitzpatrick in the morning game was a lot worse than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I cannot believe that we got a penalty on that. We couldn't get overturned. I mean, granted, that wasn't necessarily going to turn the game around for us, but it was just terrible. It ticked me off even further. I, I do agree. And before superfan Aaron Peterson calls us out, this is not why we lost the game. <laughs> this right. is not what we're we'll, saying. We'll agree on that, Scott. We will finally will agree on that. However, it was so deflating because that was – that to me was the nail in the coffin that we just, we had no chance to recover. Not only because we didn't have the ball anymore, you know, or we, we didn't get the ball when we could have had it, but it just, it just shot. It was, it was a morale killer for yeah. the, for the rest of the game. And uh, that was unfortunate, but, uh, but again, that's not why we lost the game. That was just the point of no return in my opinion. And, uh, oh, it just, cause we, cause we intercepted, <laughs> It wasn't it was an interception that got called back, right? Yep. It and how are you supposed ball. how are you supposed to hit the quarterback? Even the announcers were like, "That was a good hit." It, it wasn't late. He didn't lead with a helmet. He hit him right in the shoulder the way you're supposed to. Um, James he Winston's face. He didn't put his full body weight on yeah. the quarterback. You know, like all when the he things, landed. Yeah, all the things you're supposed to do, he did. Yeah, and... James Winston is the new Tom Brady. Oh, wow. <laughs> That'll be the headline. Yeah, right. All right. So let's uh, talk about the elephant in the room. In this case, the grease ball. Oh, my room. gosh. He's if not. <laughs> Scott. He looks he looks like it. I'm sorry. I'm, I keep seeing whenever I see him now, I can't not see Frank from Shameless. I think no, it, this this is all just part of the ploy to get you thinking one thing. Yeah. And then so next week he's going to come all clean shaven and his hair cut. Could ready, be. ready to rock and just be turned around. Yeah. yeah, once he puts on the helmet, he just looks like the Green Bay Packers quarterback. There you go. No, he, Aaron Rodgers is not a grease ball. Before you peop, people write me letters and voicemails, calling me names. No, I was just it was a joke comparing him to the image I saw earlier today. Uh, two interceptions, only 133 passing yards, zero TDs. This is incredibly frustrating to watch, especially compared to Jameis Winston who last year was the interception king. Didn't he have like 20 or 30 interceptions all season? He had a few, yeah. N no interceptions and five passing touchdowns. Interestingly enough, only 148 passing yards, which, you know, doesn't sound great, but five touchdowns, uh, it's hard to argue with how how uh, how he played. And Rodgers was quoted to say after the game, quote, we played bad, I played bad. Not characteristic of how we've practiced in training camp. Obviously not how I've played over the years. This is hopefully an outlier moving forward. We'll find out next week. I want to know how you feel about that last sentence, Wayne, because we'll find out next week doesn't spark a whole lot of optimism in my mind. We'll yeah. see next week if it gets better. No, next week we're going to be better. That's what you say. I agree. The first half of that quote, Sounds spot on. He's accepting his part of the blame and all of that stuff. <laughs> the hopefully it's just an outlier. It's like, I think he was as deflated as we were because you saw some of the Packer fandom online. They're like, oh, this is going to be a crappy season. I'm like, it's yeah. one game. People. One. It is. It is one game. game. I mean, but, you know, you got to come out the gate strong. And the, that was definitely not coming out the gate strong. The pressure to go undefeated is is off. <laughs> um so. That's a weird positive spin. <laughs> <laughs> we can move forward. I saw a meme, and I don't know if it's accurate or anything because I don't really care that much about quarterback ratings, but they said that if Aaron Rodgers had done nothing more than just throw the ball into the dirt on every single play, his rating actually would have been higher than it was in yesterday's game. I, I believe it. I believe it. It was. I, I've seen headlines saying it was the worst game of his career and it, it's hard to argue with that i don't think i've ever seen him play that poorly i don't think i've seen the team play that poorly it was just very very saddening and uh depressing and that early sack of aaron Rodgers, it, it was such a huge loss mm -hmm. and it seemed ne unnecessary i mean granted they were covering our receivers very well but Th you know hang on away. the wall the ball that long and we lost so much yardage Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, boy. Well, it was oh. like he thought he was going to escape, and that uh, I don't remember the player's name. 
just kind of wrapped him up and came back for 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 seconds. <laughs> you know, uh, throw it to throw it to the sideline, man. Get he was obviously well out of the pocket, so not going to worry about intentional grounding. Get it out of there. I don't know if he just didn't see him coming back yeah. the second time, but uh, yeah, that that was and the interceptions, man. The one where he just completely undershot Devonte Adams. What's going on there? And then the one where he just decided he was going to bust things wide open from the five yard line and and throw one down nowhere near our player. And the guy that intercepted it was actually covering the other guy. That's how much time he had to come across the field and get it. It was just insane. But it was a beautiful pass. Aside from how it <laughs> ended, I I was excited. I was like, if this actually works, this is going to turn the whole game around. Yeah. I, I do have a question though. Do you think? Just another part of it. Do you think we abandoned the running game a little too early? I, I mean, I don't feel like we really utilized it much at all. I barely remember any running. I felt like all we were doing was passing, especially like the second quarter on. Well, so I, I know part of it because unfortunately where you were, you were stuck watching the Bengals Vikings overtime game. So you might've missed the few true. running plays we had. We, we had some with Adams and AJ Dillon and, then all of a sudden, by the time you tuned in, uh, it was too late and we moved on. Yeah, that that was frustrating. Although that finale was a was was quite a game to watch. I was just sitting there looking at my watch, going, "Are we gonna? Are we gonna? <laughs> are we gonna get, put this game back on? It's a game of the week, people. I don't care if it's in overtime. Game of the week. Let's go." Exactly. Uh, and I, I probably should have put this under under positives, even though we didn't have too many positives. But uh, Lafleur did keep us cool. During that uh, that controversial call that we talked about earlier, you could tell he really wanted to lay into some refs, and he pulled it back so as not to get fined or ejected yeah. or anything like that. But uh, yeah, you know, you could sense his frustration. But I got to give kudos to him because he's not he he doesn't get po'd and swear it at uh, refs as much as some other you know head coaches have in the past i mean man even holmgren back in the day you remember when he oh. would just lay into those refs his head his whole face it yep. would be red 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 and just kind of one of the things to put a an interesting capper on the discussion before we get to listener feedback uh dan dyler he shared a stat a meme whatever you want to call it it's it's both really basically he said you know it's a good idea to have a little perspective because early last season, the Saints beat a team 38 to 3, just like they beat us 38 to 3. They beat the Buccaneers 38 to 3, and we know what happened after that game the rest of the season True. for the Buccaneers. I found that pretty interesting. And boy, the Packers fan nation really want to just uh, hold on to that. So, <laughs> yeah, a little perspective does help sometimes. And, and man, how sweet would it be for us to pull, turn that around like Tampa Bay did and make something happen? Let's do it. Well, let's go on to some listener feedback. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to contact us and leave us a voicemail, you can do so at the number 920-3-PACK-GO. Or if you'd like, you can also send your voice message to feedback at PackersFanPodcast.com. And since the Pack are playing on Monday night this week, also known as Tuesday morning for many areas outside North America, we're recording the show on Tuesday instead. So you're going to want to make sure you get those awesome vo voicemails within a few hours of the game ending so we'll have time to prep them for the podcast. Thank you for doing that. And you guys are usually really good about that. But as soon as the game's over, shoot us a voicemail and we would love to hear from you. First one comes from Andre in L.A. Go! Wow, that was rough. Andre in L.A. Ooh, that, I always wonder, is it a good idea, I mean, is it a bad idea to not play in preseason? And it, I can't say it's a truth because last year they didn't play in preseason and we started off really good. So it just looks like they didn't show up to play at all and the Saints did, you know. I mean, you, what can you even say? Other than, you know, let's just move on to week two. Uh, good to hear from you guys. Just check it in. I forgot to call last week. It's been crazy off season. St uh was still a little disappointed the way it ended, but remember that, hey, we made it to the NFC Championship. No shame in losing to the GOAT. Uh, and let's just look forward to next week. Love you guys. I'm in L.A. Go, Pat, go! 
Oh, thank you, Andre. It's so good to hear your voice, man. It's awesome that you're still doing those Go Pack Goes even after a disappointing loss. Yeah, I know that's been a, a big topic of conversation this week on the social medias is, uh, you know, whether or not we should have, you know, played in the, had played as starters in the preseason games. I'm, I'm still on the fence with that. Like, I, he made a good point. You know, we, we didn't play our starters last year and we came out the gate super strong last year. So, you know, you, you, there's arguments for it and arguments against it. Uh, in my opinion, I just think that the Packers purely underestimated the Saints going into this. Uh, I think we got a little overconfident, which is something that I preach against in my keys to victory often on this podcast. And uh, yeah, we did, we cannot go into next week overconfident. Wayne, what do you think? Well, I think it's fine for us fans to be overconfident. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the team, maybe not so much. And he could be onto something there. And I think summing it up by just saying, that was rough. That was rough. That pretty much uh, summed it up. It almost sounded like he was then going to segue into uh, one of your Midwestern uh, ooftas. Oofta. <laughs> but no. Wayne Scott, meet Art from Texas. Whoa. Wow. I think that I think that, that there's more than meets the eye when it came to this loss. Whether it be the off-season distractions affecting the team, um, I, I still think that they should have gone after defensive linemen, run stoppers more aggressively. I, I, I have no clue. I just hope that it's just a bump on the road to the Super Bowl. Uh, we'll see, and we'll see what happens next week. If we, see if they can rebound from this and see if they can come in with a more clear mind focus on the game. But, uh, no matter what, go pack, go green and go from dead and cold. That is right. Art, calling from Texas, thank you so much for giving us a ring at 9203-PACK-GO. And yeah, there's definitely more than meets the eye when it comes to this loss. I'm just not sure what it all is and whether or not it has too much to do with not going out for another uh, lineman very aggressively. But like you said, Art, this could just be a bump in the road on the way to the Super Bowl. And I do think they can turn this thing around. I mean, obviously they can. Even because we get an extra day before the Monday Night Football game and we're going home and we're playing the Lions and just that beat down from the Saints was so bad that every facet of the team and the coaching staff is uh, eating humble pie today, I would assume. Definitely. I love what he said, a bump in the road to the Super Bowl. That is a Wayne Henderson spin on this <laughs> week's for sure. Uh, but Art, that was really awesome. Go Thanks so much for the voicemail. Pack go, but also no pack no. This is Jake, Jacob from the Rockford area uh, checking in to, to say um, very disappointing start to the season. Um, I think we know that the starters probably should have played at least a little bit during preseason. I think that's necessary for... Uh, warm up and cohesion and getting on the same page and since they didn't have that game experience they just looked flat they looked not on the same page there was a couple times I saw like routes that were run all in the same area the offense just didn't look right um, and then the defense couldn't get off the field the Saints did a great job um, running the ball like being committed to the run even though it wasn't super effective uh, for the beginning part of the game um, and they just managed to keep getting first downs, keep our defense on the field, keeping them hot and exhausted. I'm sure the weather played an effect, but, um, yeah, it's one game. It sucks that it's a loss, but um, I think we're going to bounce back. I think this team's too good. I mean, we just did back-to-back 13 and three seasons. Maybe we can't really expect that this year. That's, that's a possibility, but I do think they're going to get this thing back together, and uh, we're going to – we're going to look a lot better with, uh, with next week. I won't guarantee you. Um, look forward to the next game. Hey, what's up, Truffle? Thank you for the call, man. We appreciate hearing from you. And, yeah, No Pack No is definitely the name of the game for sure. Uh, looking flat is a really good way to put it. He was talking about some of those routes. There was a, there was a couple, like, just straight-up miscommunications where – 
you know, a, a wide receiver did a button hook and the pass was thrown ahead of him. I, you know, just things like that, that <clears throat> they just weren't all there, weren't cohesive. And uh, yeah, the defense being on the field in the heat for that amount of time was definitely a factor. I mean, you, at one point in the game, I was looking at the time of possession and it was almost double. That is insane. And th- th- it's, that's not the defense's fault, man. Uh, you know, they, they've only got so much energy. And, uh, you know, keeping them out there for that long, you know, you go three and out or, or go get get a first down and then go th- and then three and out the series after that. You, you you can't do that to your defense, especially in the heat. I wouldn't even want to necessarily be a fan at the game sitting on the side of the stadium that was just staring into the sun. Yep. I've, in Florida. Ugh. Yeah, I've done that at a few Rams games when it's been 102 degrees at the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. but not the humidity like they have in Florida. So I don't know how you put on a complete uniform. We're wearing our dark home jerseys, and it's humid. It's like that's a combination right there. Why did so, we have to wear the home jerseys? Wasn't this technically a Saints game? It is, but the uh, Saints elected to wear their light-colored jerseys. Yeah, of course they did. So, you know, stick it to us one more little way and just make it, uh, even if it's all just a mind game, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hey, Wayne and Scott, this is your cheesehead from Indy, Dan. Um, I know I was supposed to, we were supposed to call in uh, after the game, but I'm still waiting for the game to be played because what I saw on my TV wasn't a game. That was an absolute fecal festival. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to even begin. Uh, but I'll, the first thing that hit me was the lack of preseason game situation opportunities that they did that the, our starters didn't have. Uh, you know, a boxer doesn't get better by watching game film. That's a part of it. But they have to get hit in the mouth. And that's exactly what happened today. And it, as tough as it was to watch, I think it was a good thing because <laughs> the New Orleans Saints, they punched us straight in the freaking throat. Um, another uh, point was a complete abandonment of the run game. Aaron Jones only had five uh, five carries. There were 15 runs total compared to that to 35 pass plays. Uh, the defense, they were just, I think they were just tired from being on the field for so long. Uh, Jameis Winston didn't kill us. He only had had 14 completions uh, as, as, uh, for 148 yards and five touchdowns. But, you know, when your time of possession is 35 minutes to 25 minutes for uh the defense for the, the Packers were on the field for 35 compared to 25 of the uh, Saints. So that's a, that was a huge, huge knock. Um, on a good note, our discipline seemed to be pretty good with only five penalties. And one of those penalties, on that one on Zadarius Smith, was absolute complete BS. Um, he had the, he, that, that was textbook, exactly what the NFL needs. And if they're going to uh, penalize players for, for making perfect hits... I don't know what these defensive guys are supposed to do. It had shades of Clay Matthews written all over it. Mm. Um, LaFleur was asked about it in the post-game presser, and he asked, uh, what are you doing trying to get me in trouble? And that in and of itself is a problem to me, because why can't coaches be respectful but still critical of the uh, of the officiating? Uh, but I digress. You know, all is not lost. It's only one game. And the rest of the NFC North has also lost all their games, so we're all tied. We're all 0-1, so it's all good. And you know what? We're going on to Lambeau Field, and I got a fever, and the only prescription is more Detroit Lions. Green and gold till I'm dead and cold. Go Pack Go! And you recognize the signature Go Pack Go from Dan in Indy. Thank you so very much for sending that in. And so many great points. He's he's still waiting for the game to begin, though. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the term fecal festival before. Alliteration well, for the win, Dan. I love it. Well, you can't go wrong with that. And he thinks that maybe this loss, aside from the standings, it might actually be a good thing because perhaps our team needed to be punched in the mouth like that. Yeah, I can see that as well. We need something to wake us up and bring us back to uh, the beginning of last year. Maybe maybe because we only had the, what, three, was it three preseason games? Right, yes. We we're used to four, so we were still in the preseason game mindset. And now week one is actually this week. I guess that's what we can go with. 
Um, Dan made a good point, too, about the penalties. Only five. I, I mean, only five is pretty sad to say. We, we, you know, we're so used to getting so much more than that. So I guess, I, I mean, I, I would say only one or two I'd be happier about. But yes, the one on Zadarius Smith. And I think even Troy Aikman made a comment on the telecast about when are they going to make penalties reviewable? Because that one, if it had been reviewed, would have clearly come back and we would have had the ball. I don't know. I agree. Heck, they even checked in with their officiating guy back east or wherever he's located for his right. professional opinion. And even he said, yeah, that shouldn't be a penalty. And I like that uh, in that postgame presser that uh, Lafleur kind of danced around even answering about that penalty. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get in trouble with the refs. Yeah. Go for it. At this point, I don't think the refs like the Packers very much, so I don't know. But it, on the plus side, like Dan said, it showed good discipline that we really only had four penalties. Next week, no more festivals. <laughs> Hi, this is Mark from New Lisbon. I'll try to keep it under two hours. Winky, <laughs> winky. No, two minutes is uh, no problem. Um, yeah, it wasn't a good game, obviously. But I think in the NFL, from week one to week two, there's always big turnarounds. Um, and uh, the Packers will be fine against Detroit on Monday night. I want to start with the coaching. I just feel like LeFleur didn't have his team ready. You know, you have to put some players on the field in the preseason to get some cohesiveness and chemistry and synergy. Um, I feel like LeFleur abandoned the run way too early. Uh, and when we can't run the ball, our play-action passes are just ineffective. And when we do run the ball, our play-action can be devastating. Um, Rodgers, just some poor decisions. Our O line didn't really help. Um, so, you know, offensively we can be better, but it was like we didn't use any motion or those bunch formations. Uh, I didn't see a lot of picks. Uh, we knew New Orleans was going to be in man coverage. We knew they were going to double team Devontae Adams, and yet we didn't really have a, a plan B for any of that. So that was a concern. Um, defense with Joe Barry's has got to be better, bottom line. We have playmakers on defense. And uh, we should have been better. Uh, we made Jameson Winston look like Drew Brees. There were receivers wide open all over the place. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement. I'll be going to the game Monday night. I've been to a lot of Packer games, but this will be the first Monday night game, so a lot of pressure on the Pack to come back. There were some positives. Um, you know, we have a lot of talent. Everybody knows that. We were 26-6 and six the last two regular seasons. So, you know, it's, there are some positives with the Packers. You can't give them up, give up on them after one week. Uh, the punter looked good. Our new punter, kind of a winky winky on that one too. So, uh, go Pack, go. Hang in there. Try and be positive. That was extremely disappointing, but, uh, the Packers tend to bounce back under Matt LaFleur after tough losses. So thanks for taking my call. Go Pack, go. Thanks so much, Mark, for the positivity in your voicemails, even though it had several winky winkies. Uh, I, I like what he said about uh, the Saints wide receivers just being open all over, making Jameis Winston look like Drew Brees. If you had told me that this game was going to have one quarterback with five touchdowns, pa five touchdown passes and zero interceptions, and the other one having zero touchdowns and two interceptions, I never in a million years would have guessed no, it would have been no. the way it went. That just sounds like Aaron Rodgers and Jameis Winston flip-flopped. Uh, I, I like the, his confidence about Monday night against the Lions. And we'll, just, we'll, we'll be fine against the Lions. What? I don't know, man. Did you see the San Francisco game? Uh, well, I'm, you know, keep in mind, Mark said he's going to be at the game. So if he has to, he will put the Packers on his back and will them to victory by himself. Well, there you go. There you go. I've got a good friend of mine that's also going to be at the Packers game. I'm a little bit jealous, uh, but I could not survive a Monday night game on a school night. Could you imagine? <laughs> Oop. Boy. So, yeah, O-line didn't help. Um, he, he's pretty much echoed a lot of stuff we've already we've already mentioned, but uh, somebody else saw that our punter looked pretty good. So <laughs> I'm not alone on that one. And a couple of things, when he mentioned the O-line didn't really help, I think we're going to shore that up a bit already, you know, by this coming Monday night. But not having David Bakhtiari is still a little scary. 
Mm-hmm. It's a bummer seeing him on the sideline in a t-shirt. You know, I just he needs to be geared up. I know he's hurt. We got to get him got to get him healthy, but it's just uh it's it's a bummer to see him. And since not- he's on the sidelines at a Packers game instead of at a Milwaukee Bucks game, he's not chugging beers and entertaining the crowd. There you go. Quite as much. And yeah, we did not have very much pre-snap motion. And Mark, I didn't notice that till you mentioned it, but that that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Even Devonte Adams, remember last season, yeah, when he would do that little crisscross thing off when he was jumping off the line, which you know may just be like a signature thing he was trying to do, but I don't know, he just didn't seem like he was into it. Uh, I don't know. It could be the heat as well, just everything piling up. But it reminded me that that long, it seemed like forever between the last preseason game and opening weekend. You know, we didn't have any games Labor Day weekend. So I watched a few different uh, CFL games, Canadian football games, Mm. and you want to see pre-snap motion. It looks like half the offense is running around before the ball's hiked. It's chaos, and it's kind of fun. I would not mind some of that being brought over. There you go. I I went to an arena football game once, and that's a completely different ball game, let me tell you. Oh, did you see the the L.A. Kiss that used to play in arena? No. We have a te- we had a local team. It was the the Raptors. Oh, the and, Raptors! Uh, they yeah, should have played had... against the LA Kiss. <laughs> but it is fun, yeah. They're, of course, in arena football, they score as many points as uh, the AFL basketball. <laughs> <laughs> there was an AFL um, Australian Rules football footy game uh, last weekend. It was the semifinal. The winner goes on to the championship game. Mm-hmm. And it, the final score was something like 126 to 51. Wow! They they just lambasted them. So that's like a fun game to watch, though. <laughs> there's a lot going on. I mean, it's a little bit of soccer, a little bit of rugby, a little bit of mm-hmm. football. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. The championship game coming up in about uh, ten days. Ah, uh, back to the Packers in the NFL. We did have a poll in our Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com as well as on Twitter at PackersFanPod. And I wanted to try to find out who or what gets most of the blame for the Packers' loss to the Saints. Now, you know, like you said, that that really only the punting looked good. But really, who gets most of the blame? Is it the Packers not playing their starters in preseason? Was it the heat and humidity? Was it because we abandoned our run game? Was it AR-12's accuracy and decisions? And we did get a write-in vote, which I should have thought of. Uh, Dictus in the Netherlands added the atrocious defense is most <laughs> to blame. And uh, 33% said the Packers not playing the preseason for the starters was one of the major things. But surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, 51% of the voters said AR-12. Yeah, I'm kind of with the community on this one, man. Uh, not, to, I'm not, I don't mean to sound like an Aaron Rodgers hater because I'm really not. I love the guy. I love what he's done for this team. But uh, there's more to being a quarterback, and I know he's not just the team. Or he's not the whole team. There's a whole team with him. But uh, he's a leader as well, and he should be pumping up the team and getting them back, their heads back in the game. I don't know, man. Even when he was on the sidelines after throwing a, throwing a pick, he'd, he'd, he'd look upset and then just kind of just sit on the sideline and whatever. It was <laughs> you know, just like, one of those days. It's almost like everybody – kind of felt like we can't stop it. It's spinning out of control, and there's nothing we can do. When mm-hmm. in reality, there's always something you can do. Um, yeah. The heat and humidity only got 3% of the votes. The run game being abandoned got 6%, and the atrocious defense got 7% of the votes. And although he didn't want to narrow it down to which one thing was most to blame, Jared added the option of, Literally everything. The Packers <laughs> failed to execute at every level of play. And not surprisingly, numerous friends uh, selected this option, and that one got the most votes. Yeah, that would have gotten my vote. <laughs> Straight up, Wayne. We thank you for voting, and here's hoping that this coming weekend we'll be voting on something to do with the victory. And thank you for the uh, votes and also for the comments, such as David's comment in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook group. And he says, as much as I would love to blame Rodgers fully, the defense couldn't stop anything and the line looked terrible. However, the Packers could have been within seven and Rodgers decided to make a terrible decision in the red zone, change the potential 
of the game. David, I do agree with you. However, I don't like to blame the defense because it's not their fault that they were on the field as long as they were. Uh, you know that that's that's an offensive issue right there. So I can't put all the blame on the defense but, because. But if they could have gotten some more sacks, they maybe could have gotten off the field. There you go. <laughs> I don't. Also, Brett in the UK said, for me, I would say the whole of the offense, in particular the passing game, two interceptions. He threw a total of five last season. If your defense isn't performing at their best, then keep them off the field. Our ball retention was terrible. Couldn't get a running game going either. Overall, w- was a poor start to the season, but still a long way to go. Keep the faith and go Pack Go. Love the positivity, man. Absolutely, we do. And Joe in the Facebook group said, I hope Aaron was just rusty, but I feel like in the last two to three years, he's been overthrowing people gradually more and more. Am I crazy? Is there a stat I can check? Defense certainly didn't help, but it was good to watch Love get a little play in there. And on the other hand, it can only get better from here. Looking forward to the old Henderson optimism. Preach it, Wayne. <laughs> go pack, go. Uh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> We're going to bring it. We're going to bring it. And it's going to be good. Also, one other comment uh, from Cathal, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name. Rust from the lack of preseason. The Saints were all go trying to figure out their quarterback and their offense. Not that we should ever consider playing our starters in preseason. So hmm. It's what you call a double-edged sword. Exactly. We've also got some comments over at the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group, which you can join at PackersCommunity.com. Uh, for, we've got a, uh, a picture there that was posted by Dictus in the Netherlands flying his Packers flag with pride. That was pretty cool. Uh, Daniel also said, that game was very painful to watch. Sorry to say Jordan Love is not the answer. Amazing we passed on TJ Watt. We need to address defense. Kenny King burned again and again. It's only one game. But we need to get our stuff together. Absolutely. Uh, don't count Jordan Love out. No, don't. I, I like seriously. Like, imagine trying to follow up that, and you know, not everybody's going to have a Favre moment to come back in and, and win a game coming off the bench after you know your starters starters injured. Uh, he's still a, a solid quarterback. He didn't have everybody out there. He was just more or less keeping Rodgers from getting injured. So. Um, I've still got a lot of faith in the guy, and I'm, it, it was good to see him on the field, even though he did, you know, <laughs> lose us the ball <laughs> at one point. But uh, still, I, he, he's only second year. Give him some right. time. And if David Bakhtiari would have been there, as well as Devontae Adams to throw to, and a different Scott, not Scott Clark, Scott Bores, maybe this game stops all the talk about this season being like the last dance. I can't even judge this defense. They were on the field far too long to even be effective. And speaking of Dictus, his thoughts on the game include terrible all around. Defense, offense, special teams, refs, play calling, literally nothing that was good. Holy smokes, that was rough. Just like Andre said, that was rough. And it looks like something that can't be fixed in a week. And I'm thinking, if anything can fix it in a week, Scott, it's going back home to Lambeau Field to host the Detroit Lions. Uh, more on that just a little bit later. Absolutely. Let's move on to some emails. Our first one comes from Jared. And Jared says, I'll start my feedback for the podcast with a quote that I saw in a social media comments thread moments ago. Quote, I've seen Ross Sewage look better than the way the Packers play today. Unquote. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Hyperbole? Maybe. Does it change the fact that the Packers played like absolute garbage throughout every level of play today? Absolutely not. There's really not much more to say beyond that. I can break down the stats that show how the Saints stomped us every chance they had. I can point to the god-awful officiating. I can point to the Rodgers interceptions and uncharacteristically bad decision-making. I can even bring up the discussion about not playing a single starter during preseason. All of that doesn't matter one or maybe all of those roads lead to atrocious execution at every level of the game. Plain and simple. The Packers played terribly, and that's all there is to it. But here's the thing. The world will keep turning. I'm still going to be excited for game day next week, and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing the Packers rebound with a vengeance against the Lions. Until then, we're all Rams fans tonight. 
This is obviously written before the game last night. So that the NFC North all starts next week at 0-1. And as far as looking beyond the game, LaFleur's biggest weakness he needs to improve is adapting his play calling when the team is getting stomped. He's a very good head coach when his plan for the game is running smoothly, but it seems as though when the play when we play teams who completely torch that plan, LaFleur seems to panic and not know what to do. As for the defense, let's hope this isn't a glimpse into yet another terrible stint of Joe Barry as defensive coordinator. His track record at this coaching position has been very bad in the past, and he proved that today. Thank you so much, Jared, for that email. And I think the point that stuck out to me the most was his criticism of LaFleur, you yeah. know, coaching under pressure, which I didn't really consider until he just said that, but that's a really good point. When things are going well, he keeps doing it and sticks with it and keeps doing those good play calling, but he needs to learn to adjust and, uh, you know, make better play calls to what's actually going on instead of what's going on in his head. That's an excellent point, Jared, and it's something to keep an eye on. I think it's just one of those games, and hopefully Mm -hmm. uh, the Lions, you know, almost beating the 49ers, you know, that was in Detroit, and I don't know. We'll find out. (laughs) I also got another email here. This one. Hey, Wayne and Scott, this is CCR from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Boy, what a horrible game. What a monstrosity. Man, we're hearing all sorts of nice descriptions uh, to (laughs) explain. Somebody pulled out their thesaurus this week. Quite a few people, yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Caleb continues, we were just looking for a few more points than we had. Although we had a few good plays, we can't believe the three turnovers. We're definitely hoping for a better game against the Lions, but no matter what, go pack go. Lead green and gold till dead and cold. Caleb, Kathy, and Roy Fisher in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Awesome. We got another email. This one comes from Stephen V. And I will tell you that the first couple paragraphs of this email are in all caps. So I know you can't hear that quite in my voice, but uh, he was... Obviously very angry. Uh, he says, Wayne and Scott, a very angry Stephen Verheron uh, checking in from Palace Park. First of all, the Minnesota Vikings played a game that went to overtime, so I didn't get to see the start of that game. Stephen, I feel your pain. <laughs> it was very, very frustrating. My wife had the game on her phone <laughs> like next to me so that we could kind of like keep up with it while the other game was on. And uh, what the heck inspired the Packers to begin the season by playing garbage football that you would expect the Chicago Bears to play? I expected the Packers starters to be rusty since none of them played in the preseason, but for the first time since the 2014 season, the Packers lost their first game of the season. That's an interesting fact. Holy cow. Seven years. The Packers won the coin toss by calling tails, and as predictable, they deferred to the second half. And I don't know if NFL or anybody else has paid attention to it, but this is the second September 20th in a row that the Packers and Detroit Lions have played each other. Boy, he sure notices some like just interesting things about scheduling, doesn't he? Yeah, September 20th it definitely was a Sunday last year. It's a Monday this year. Crazy. Um, I guess we're not going to play him next year when it's on Tuesday or Wednesday, but you know. Yeah, that won't that won't happen. Uh, how do you think Aaron Rodgers will play in his first home game at Lambeau in front of the fans for the first time since he had all that drama with the Green Bay Packers in the off season? I know in the past two regular seasons the Packers have not lost two games in a row, but will that go on being true, Stephen Verheeren? What do you think, Wayne? How's Rodgers going to look in front of the hometown crowd uh, next Monday? Well, I think he's going to look just fine. And I think Steven's alluding to the fact that maybe there will be some fans booing him, but I don't think so. If if, if there's a few, they're going to be drowned out by the Lambeau faithful. Um, I hope you're right, man, but the sports fans can turn on a dime. Even the ones in Green Bay sometimes can. So Well, true, but this is the home opener, and we are just so excited to be able to be at Lambeau Field, the fans that get to go. Um, in full capacity, by the way. Yes, so I think it's going to be... Just great, and wow, he compared our play to the Chicago Bears, and yeah, the Bears didn't fare much better in the late game last night. So, Well, they looked better than we did in the first half of that game. I, it was well, so depressing, man, watching our game and then watching other games and just seeing everybody play so much better or watching highlights in the halftime of like all these teams like, oh, that's how football is played. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, Scott. <laughs> um that that was quite a zinger. Um, I'm 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 fired up, man. That was yeah, that was that uh, Chiefs Browns game. Oh, the man. Browns almost had that thing, and the Cowboys almost 
uh, beat the Buccaneers at just so many close games and not ours. But, uh, Stephen, I do like the stat that we have not lost a home opener since 2014. Yeah. Crazy. I think what happened was they showed a similar stat to that on the screen before the game. And then, <laughs> Is that what it was? And then, ouch, you know. Knock on wood. We have not lost two games in a row under Coach LaFleur, and it's not going to start this season. I sure hope not. As always, thank you to everybody for all of your calls, emails, comments, and support. If you would like to join that Packers fan Facebook community and be part of the conversations, head over to PackersCommunity.com, especially on game day for our live game discussion thread when my wife lets me participate in the conversation during commercials. Perfect. Perfect. And now is the time because you're 0 and 1. Green Bay Packers are hosting the 0 and 1 Detroit Lions at Lambeau Field Monday, September 20th, 725 p.m. Central Time. Scott, would you be surprised if I told you the Packers lead the series? No. Not okay, at all. good. Because we really lead the series. All time, 104 victories to 72 losses and seven ties. Of course, the two teams first met way back in the day in 1930 when the Lions were the Portsmouth Spartans of Ohio. The Spartans later moved to Detroit for the 1934 season. And we have met the Lions twice a year since 1932 without any canceled games. And that makes the Packers-Lions rivalry the longest continuously running rivalry in the NFL. Can I get a go, Pat? Go. Go, Pat, go. And to wash the memory of the loss to the Saints out of my mind, I'd love to travel back in time to November 24th, 1940, and watch our Packers beat the Lions 50-7. to That would definitely help. That, that, would, that would help at this point. And Monday night's weather coming up Lambeau Field. It's going to be humid and cloudy, around 80 degrees Fahrenheit at kickoff, which is uh, 26 degrees Celsius, and that's warm for a night game at Lambeau no matter what month it's in. It will cool off very quickly after kickoff. Let me tell you, once that sun goes down in Wisconsin, it, it starts cooling off right away. So bring your sweaters, um, your hand warmers, uh, get ready, because uh, you're going to need to wear your five layers for the second half. Not that much, no. <laughs> oh, okay, let's not go crazy. Well, let's go ahead and move on to my keys to a Packers victory over the Lions. Just got three of them this week. The first one, very simply, reboot, restart, whatever you want to call it. Take the loss in stride. It doesn't matter how much we lost by. A loss is just that, a single loss. There's 16 more games to go, so let's call this one a mulligan and use it as a reason to be that much more resilient when we host the Lions this coming Monday. I read on Packers.com this week that the name of the game this week is Resilience. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Secondly, I think the Packers should not think of this as uh, the the Lions team as the Lions team that we have known and loved all these years. Uh, They've had a history of not being the best team, but this past week, they nearly knocked off the Niners with an impressive come-from-behind rally. Didn't pull it off, obviously, but they did some impressive things. Green Bay should walk into Lambeau acting as if this were a playoff game. The players, the coaches, the fans, everybody needs this win to gain any kind of a moment, momentum if this year is going to pan out. So do not underestimate the Lions because we clearly underestimated the Saints. And lastly, Aaron Rodgers needs our support, guys. I, a lot of people are, are very unhappy with him right now with that abysmal week one and you know whatever the drama that was going on over the offseason was because I still feel like we don't really know the full story. But he needs the love and support from the hometown crowd. A lot of what has happened lately before this game was, in my opinion, a lot of fault of the media more than Rodgers himself. And with that said, the fault lies squarely on his shoulders from the Saints game. But let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. He's still got some fight left in him. And if this indeed is his last season with the Packers, no one wants him to go out on top more than he does. So we need to rally behind him, especially the fans in the stadium. I don't want to hear any boos, man. I don't like boos anyway, even when it's somebody I don't like. I just don't like it. I just I just think that's in poor taste. But uh, let's rally behind our longstanding quarterback, cheer him on, even if his play isn't as perfect as we'd like to see. He needs us just as much. So those are my keys to the victory. Oh, man, Scott, you've got me fired up. Go, Pack, go! There you go, it's man. It's going to be epic. That, that's excellent. And, yeah, 100% true. 
Now, of course, we have our 2021 season uh, wager o fun, where we try to pick the Packers' victories uh, closest to the actual score. But since we lost, um, neither of us gets a point. Um, let's see, how would we do just for fun? I picked Packers 28, <laughs> Saints 17, and you picked uh, Packers 24, Saints 20. Nowhere near in the vicinity, <laughs> neither of us. 38 to 3. Wow, wow, well, wow. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you my prediction for this weekend, Wayne. I think you're going to be surprised because I think from our text conversations this week, you kind of had expected me to pick the Packers to lose this week. But I am actually going to pick the Packers to win. Uh, and surprisingly, I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I know that wow. doesn't make any sense after this week, but I really think that we're going to see Aaron Rodgers come out clean-shaven, cut, and he's just going to reboot and he's going to be, and then he's going to have his R E L A X moment. Although he didn't do that. He said, we'll see what happens next week. Uh, and he's going <laughs> to turn it around and be like, I'm back. And then all the fans are going to be like, see, we knew we were never worried for a second. Yeah, whatever. So I'm going to say Packers 35 lions 30. That's almost the same kind of excitement that uh, a lot of fans online are feeling about ABBA coming back. ABBA's coming back. But they, <laughs> they're back. They have a new album, single, all that stuff. I don't know. Oh my goodness! Yeah, people it, still listen to disco. It, it's not my thing, but, but there are people that are amped up. <laughs> oh my goodness! But thirty-five to thirty, I, yeah, I can man. almost understand seeing the Packers get thirty-five, but the Lions getting thirty. Is yeah. there going to be another one of those close ones where they the Lions are going to do a couple of onside kicks in a row? And I don't know. Interesting. It could be, man. It could be. Uh, you're, what you're, about you? You are swinging for the fences. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it or not, am actually predicting a lower scoring game. I, I think the Packers are going to win, though. Let's not go crazy. Packers twenty four, Lions seventeen. And, you know, just 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 to say, you also predicted the 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 Saints getting seventeen points last week. So I was forecasting the wrong week. Oh, <laughs> that's all I can <laughs> think of. <laughs> Get all choked so, up on that one. I know, right? As you mentioned, that means our wager O fun is securely set at Wayne Zero, Scott Zero. So just like our Green Bay Packers, both of us are winless. Yeah, and <laughs> speaking of all those zeros, the Packers still in first place at the NFC North at zero and one. The Lions, I'm gonna put them in second place with their O and one record. The Bears are O and one and the Vikings are O and one. Now I gotta ask you, how are you saying that the Packers are in first place because of our 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 record last year? Is that how you're putting them in first, or just because you like them better? All of those things. We are, <laughs> okay. we won the division. We are the Packers. This is the Packers Fan Podcast, the show by and for fans of your 13-time <laughs> NFL champion Green Bay Packers. When these other teams get 13 NFL titles, we'll put them in the conversation. Well, as much as I'd love for that to be the case, Wayne, I am going to challenge you and say that according to NFL.com, the Packers are actually in fourth place because the uh, differential, if that is all tied, goes down to points scored against. And we had the most points scored against us this week. So, unfortunately, not that it matters. It's game one, right? Yeah. Look at that angry face you're giving me right now. <laughs> Can you picture it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about some other happenings in the NFL this week. First off, Ryan Fitzpatrick is on injury reserve for a hip subluxation. No word on if his season or career is over, and uh, Taylor Heineke will be starting week two. I believe that's against the Giants. So uh, that's a huge, huge hit to that team for sure. Also, Matthew Stafford looks like he's made a match in heaven with the Rams. Boy, 321 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, and also... How impressive does that stadium look? Man, I'm a little jealous you you live right close to there and able to make that happen. Yeah, and if I take a mortgage out on the house, I could afford to buy tickets. Even the tickets to go see the Chargers, of course, they're much improved this year, but even the Chargers tickets are steep now. They used to be really? giving them away, you know, buy three tacos at Taco Bell, get a ticket or something, you know, <laughs> kind of like that. But um, it is a very impressive stadium. Of course, nothing competes to the magic of Lambeau Field. But compared to the Rams Coliseum and the Chargers uh, when they played in San Diego at Qualcomm, <laughs> both horrific dumps. So this is a huge upgrade. You know what's weird? 
is seeing it last night with the uh, the Rams playing the Bears full of people. It actually looks bigger when it's full of people than last season when it was empty. That's crazy. It just looks massive. Just people everywhere. And yes, Matthew, Matthew Stafford, maybe all the hype was real because I thought, look, he's been around the league a long time and the Rams are expecting him to bring excitement and accuracy and all this stuff. I think they're reaching. He sure did. It, it, it was a pretty high powered game. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It, it was it was a good game, and uh, that I do hope to find a way. Maybe maybe in November, depending on how the Rams and Chargers season goes, maybe the ticket prices will fluctuate, and I just go to a game. Buy just a go take a tour, take a tour of the stadium, man. Like my wife and I have been doing. Well, when you get out here for another E three, when it comes back to real life, we'll do that. There you go. Well, moving on, I want to remind everybody that I do have another podcast besides this one that I'd love for you to check out, and it's all about my favorite hobby, video games. It's called The Gaming Outsider, where we chat about what I love to do for a couple hours each week. And this week, we're taking a deep dive on the PlayStation Experience live stream that was chock full of really impressive announcements this week that is really making Sony look pretty good. We're going to take a deep dive on that, so be sure to check that out. Our website, if you'd like to, is thegamingoutsider.com, and you can also check out the show on the same places you listen to this fine podcast. Well, you all are MVPs in my book, but as a, a additional bonus, we do offer a value for value model here at your Packers Fan Podcast. Everything you pledge goes back into the show, and details for that can be found at patreon.com forward slash Packers Fan Podcast. Want to give a special shout out to Mr. Dan Dyler. Thank you so much for your pledge at the Jim Ringo level. Go, Pack, go to you, sir, or should I say, go, 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 Pack, go. That was terrible. That was an interesting interpretation. I like it, though. <laughs> but at the end of the show, you hear is go, 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 go. You'll hear there it. You Stay tuned to the very end, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> also, listener Bryant, thank you and go, Pat, go for your Patreon support at the Willie Wood level. Go, Pat, go is going out to our great Brett Favre level supporters, Colin Nolan in Ireland, Miguel Ramirez from the Opposites Attract podcast, Lawrence Harvey, Jeff Summerfield, and Andre in L.A., and wrap it up with classic Go Pat Goes for our Curly Lambo Patreon pledges. Joe Christensen, Matt Haig, Hank Davis from the TPE Network of Podcasts, and Beth Mintick. Thank you so much for all of your support. Again, we invite you to check out how you too can share your love of the show. Details at patreon.com slash Packers Fan Podcast. And we are the unofficial Packers Fan Podcast. We are not official. We're not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers or Taco Bell with free tickets to games in the old days. Please follow the Packers Fan Podcast where you listen to podcasts. And the one I recommend these days is the Fountain app. It's one of the great new podcasting 2.0 capable podcast listening applications. Also, if you get a moment, please tell a friend about Packers Fan Podcast. And if you're not already following, do so on Twitter. Our handle is at Packers Fan Podcast. My personal one is at GoCast Scott. And Wayne's is at Wayne Henderson. And to send us out to prep for Monday night's matchup against the Lions, here's Packers Fan Podcast Patreon supporter Dan Dyler. Hey, Packers Fan Podcast listeners. This is your cheesehead from Indianapolis, Dan. And I have two, just two words for you. Go 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 go